All right, welcome back to another video. For those that are new here, my name's James and I have motor neuron disease. Now on this week's video, I wanna share with you some of the adaptions and technology that I utilize and benefit from to enable me to do everyday tasks that you would normally take for granted, like operate a laptop. Sounds quite simple, but for me, it is very difficult with the type of motor neuron disease that I am currently experiencing and suffering from, which is called limb onset ALS. ALS is one of the most common types of motor neuron disease. And for me, it has affected my limbs, predominantly my arms and my hands at the moment. Now, if you haven't already seen some of my older videos, I'd encourage you after this one, go and have a quick watch on them. And that will give you more of a backstory on how my diagnosis and progression has changed over the last sort of almost four years since my diagnosis. So uh, on to this week's video, I want to share with you a couple of things that I found really beneficial that has helped me be able to still do things like fill out applications, navigate around a laptop or a computer, because life still carries on with or without motor neuron disease, unfortunately. And for me, being the the independent person that I still want to be living with this condition I have utilized uh, things to enable me to still do that by adapting to different technology options on my laptop as well as things like this adapted mouse which I'll show you in a minute so uh, yeah let's get into it so this adapted mouse was given to me from a occupational therapist within the hospital that I'm looked after. And uh, it reminds me of something like out of the eighties, like a, an Atari game console, if you remember that, just the color scheme and the size of it, but it really does work and really does help. In terms of what it does, it's, it's a mouse. So you've got right click and left click. I don't really use those two buttons. Uh, this is just a lock lock button. Um, I don't really use these buttons. I use a foot pedal, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, but to operate it, it's literally just like a joystick and that then moves the cursor on the, on the actual screen. If I show you, where's the cursor gone? There it is. So you can see the cursor moving here and you can change the speed of how it moves. And if I want to simply click on something, let's say I want to I don't know, let's say I want to go and save something. So I'll navigate up to file and I could use the red button, but as I'm sitting down majority of the time, I use this foot pedal, which is attached to the mouse. So what the foot pedal now enables me to do is not worry about having to navigate with just my hand on the mouse keeping a bit more strength in it, I suppose, so I can still use the joystick and that's all I need to worry about. Uh, and then the foot pedal just takes away that extra movement to have to navigate the cursor to where I want to click, move my hand to click the, the right click or left click. With the foot pedal, I'm able to just use my, uh, my foot or my toe and it really does take away the the fatigue that I will end up experiencing using either a normal trackpad on a laptop or a standard mouse because I just haven't got the the arm or the hand strength to constantly keep moving the mouse or the wrist dexterity so uh, yeah if you are living with this condition as well I would definitely recommend something like an adapted mouse to enable you to you know, operate something like a mouse. But um, if I can't use the mouse, there is another trick that my laptop does, which I was shown by someone within the hospital and I'm still getting used to it. It's quite temperamental, but it uses your voice to operate the laptop. So let me show you how that works. So when my occupational therapist come around with the mouse and showed me how to use it, not that it needed any instructions really, uh, she also showed me some settings uh, and some accessibility settings that we can add to, for example, my laptop, which is an Apple Mac. Uh, it's a MacBook Air. 
I think this is the same across all Apple products. So apologies for any PC users out there, but I'm sure you can do the same on, on them. Um, so effectively, she added some accessibility options to the, uh, the computer, enabling me to not even need to use a mouse and also not even needing to use a keyboard because I can't type on a keyboard very well. It's the, you know, I've got the fastest index finger in the West and uh, this option really does help me. So let's use the mouse to actually activate the voice control. And what it will do, so this is one of two options that's been set up on my laptop. This is the first option. And I don't know whether you can see, since I've added the voice control onto the laptop, you can see some numbers just come up. So if I wanna to navigate to any of those numbers, I can just say the number. So let's say I want to close this window down. Let's say I wanna close this program down. Uh, so actually click the close, it's the red button up here. Uh, but if I don't wanna use or I can't use my mouse, I would just say the word or the number 18 and it will close it. And all these numbers stay up here. So if I want to access anything, so say I want to access um, or I want to close the laptop down, for example, or if I want to sort of come down to one of the icons down at the bottom, I would just find the corresponding number and say it. So let's show you another example. If I want to go to file, for example, that's number three, and I would just go three, and then it will open up the window. Now, if I wanted to use the laptop with the numbers option by speaking to it, as well as operating a keyboard, uh, I could do that as well. So if I open up my accessibility settings in the computer, and again, I can operate it through the numbers. So accessibility is under, what number is that? Number 67, no, it's not, 37. It will then open that up. But for the video point of view, let me just open up a keyboard and I can put an accessibility keyboard onto my screen. And again, all the numbers are corresponding to whatever letter I want to, to put in. So if I was writing a post or I was sending an email, I can operate the keyboard just by using my voice to, uh, type in what I wanted to type in. Now there's loads of other adaptions you can do. You can do voice, tech, uh, voice to text, which is probably what I use the most. Uh, but if I wanted to use a keyboard, I've got the option here. Now you might see this mouse that has got like a, a circular timer that keeps going. What that does is it saves you having to click a mouse. So say if I wanted to, to click number four, I'll just move the mouse and it'll click it. So I tend not to use that keyboard too much, but if I, if I didn't have the option to do text to voice, if I was writing a document, I would use the keyboard for everything else. Don't get me wrong, it is, it is harder to operate something like a laptop without using the standard technology that it comes with, but doing things like you know, adding accessibility options to your computer or your laptop to enable you to still operate it is, is really nice. It does help me still feel like I'm independent to be able to do things myself. I think out of all the options that I've utilized, the mouse is probably gonna be the, the, the most I'm using at the moment. The other thing I am utilizing is um, AI. AI is, is here to stay, I think. And it's, uh, it is mad how it is already adapting to personalize their, what do you call it? The answers that you, you know, the answers that it gives you from the questions that you give it, if that makes sense. So I use chat GPT for some things and I can basically write a whole word document or reply to an email from it. And over time, it's now adapted to the type of language that I use, and it's adapted its personality to match mine. So it sounds like me when I respond to an email, for example. So I technically don't need to use anything other 
than either this adaptive mouse to navigate to an AI program like ChatGPT. And, uh, and I can allow that to do the majority of admin work, like responding to emails, things like that. Now, as my condition, unfortunately, will progress, I'll probably have to utilize things like eye gaze technology, uh, which I'm luckily not having to use just yet. And more than likely use my banked voice, which I recorded a few years ago to send voice notes, things like that. But at the moment, it's finding small little wins that will help me still do the things that I enjoy, like make these videos and try and make that job as easy as I can while I still can. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please feel free to subscribe to the channel. It really does help it grow and, and push it out to more people to help raise a bit more awareness for most neuron disease. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you've got any questions, please feel free to put them down in the comments and I will see you on the next one. Mind over matter, mind over MND. We do this together, join hands with me. I wish that we never met. Pass get crossed and you're on to the next. You make it so hard to forget. You take so much on ounce of regret.